Welcome to the Independence Podcast. Uh, my name is Daniel Ratcliffe, uh, Benefits Coordinator at the Independence Center. Today we have with us two trailblazers in the Colorado Springs uh, community, um, two individuals that I truly admire and am happy to have uh, seated with me today. Uh, the two individuals I'm speaking of is Terry Ulrich and Pat Goings. Um, if we could just do a brief introduction, uh, Pat, would you would you like to uh, give us a little background? Oh, on you bet. Well, thank you, Daniel, so much for letting us join you. My uh, my background is I was the director of the Arthritis Foundation for Southern Colorado in the late '80s and early wow. '90s, and then had an opportunity to go to the regional ADA center which was a program that provided ADA technical assistance to a six-state area. I worked with uh, that ADA center for some 15 years and and then subsequently uh, retired for two weeks and realized that was really boring and (laughs) linked up with Terry. And so we're doing ADA consulting work now and and, uh, having a good time and, and feeling like we're making an impact. Awesome, awesome. So when you speak of the ADA for individuals that don't, don't, that don't know, what, what is the ADA? Yeah, good question. Uh, giving seminars, we would always make the joke that this is not the American Dental Association. Right, that's the first thing Or that the American Dairy Association. Right. This is the Americans with Disabilities Act, which was passed in 1990 and took effect in 1992. And Terry, would you like to uh, d- jump in and give us a little background on yourself? Sure. Hey, thanks a lot, Daniel, for uh, letting us be here. We really enjoy the opportunity and love talking about the ADA and our business. Um, My background is kind of checkered past. Uh, I started a curbside recycling program back in the 80s that was um, called WeCycle, and we um, hired only people with major mental illnesses as our workforce. And um, it got me really interested in... um, the world of people with disabilities and um, and the issues that surround that and um, and so I followed really closely in 1990 when the ADA was um, being discussed and when it was implemented in 1992 and have uh, studied it and uh, then I worked for the last 10 years with the Independent Center in different roles worked with the uh, older individuals with blindness and uh, did some grant writing and development work and um, and then about two years ago we thought that the business, community is so confused about the ADA and all of those legal implications that uh, it'd be great if there was a a low-cost kind of informational uh, place in Colorado Springs that could um, help folks easily understand their obligations and maybe give them a pathway to figuring out how they don't have to worry about any kind of um, uh, consequences from not following that law. Awesome, awesome. And if, if I could, Daniel, I'm going to follow all along with what Terry said. Uh, when we put together this business, ASAP, ADA Surveys and Plans, we were able to really uh, offer very affordable uh, assistance on what the ADA says and doesn't say, and then underscoring it that it was confidential and, uh, and, and low cost. Okay. And so that uh, that seems to resonate well, and it, some of this was generated by something that has been called drive-by lawsuits. Okay, and, and what, what are those? What are, what are drive-by lawsuits? Well, it, uh, it's very prevalent in California and Florida, and to a lesser extent in Hawaii, and there have been instances in Colorado where somebody will literally drive by a private business and notice that their parking lot, it does not meet the ADA requirements perfectly, and they'll all say, we are suing you. But by the way, if you give us $2,000, we'll go away and retract our lawsuit. Wow. So, it, I mean, it is a blatant shakedown. Wow. And uh, so the fact that we can help people with a parking lot survey 
is their best defense that they can say, yes, we realize there's some non-compliant elements, but we have a plan to fix them and we're underway to fix them. That okay. will be the best defense. Right. And, and just to, to, uh, to jump in and ask a question, how does the how do these parking lot surveys uh, help? This is a two sided question. How do they help the business owner and how does it help the business patron? Great question. Well, first of all, it helps the business owner, and this also applies to our cities and counties, to let them know, well, what are the elements, what are those features of that parking lot that need to be fixed? Uh, And it can be such things so simple, uh, signage, uh, putting in a vertical sign, uh, making sure there's access aisles next to those accessible spaces, also known as handicapped spaces. But more importantly, when you do remove barriers in your parking lot, you enable somebody with a mobility impairment, yeah. heart condition, things of this nature, be able to park, come in, buy their pizza, go to the movie, uh, literally uh, utilize their discretionary income uh, to the benefit of the business. And just one other thing, if I can jump in. Yeah, go right ahead. Very, uh, very seldom is there just a single person that might need a proper parking lot. There's family, uh, you know, there's uh, uh, parents, there's kids, that type of thing. So oftentimes there might be one person with a mobility impairment, mm-hmm. but four people in that car, all of whom are spending money. Correct. That's, and so uh, if we're talking about money. About how much money uh, does the population of individuals with disability bring to our economy, roughly? Uh, are, you, are you familiar with that? I think I heard something along the lines of maybe 500, was it billion? billion. Yeah, I was just looking at some of those numbers. And, um, and that's been the estimate by uh, government surveys that that the population of people with disabilities have five hundred billion dollars of disposable income, which is wow. comparable to the African American community community at about five hundred ten billion, wow. and the Hispanic community that's even a little bit less than five hundred billion. Wow. So it's a huge major um, sector that are being actively disinvited currently. That businesses could just spend a little attention and a little money to, um, you know, actively encourage those folks to come in. And especially a population of folks that, as Pat was saying, that there's a lot of uh, additional people besides, you know, that individual. There's families, there's friends, and there's definitely loyalty by, um, yes. by members of that community of when you're able and welcomed in an establishment that that's the place you want to be. Yeah, so so I'm hearing you say that uh, businesses that add a little bit di- a little bit of diversity and inclusion mm-hmm. and accessibility yes. will gain some really loyal customers. That, Absolutely, that's what I'm hearing. Yes, and, and you know the other thing that has evolved since the ADA took effect in 1992 is our aging population. Yes, and typically as we get older, we don't walk as fast. Uh, you know, nor more inclination to use walkers. Uh, and so we really try and communicate this isn't just about wheelchairs. Uh, I mean, it is so much broader. And, and now that uh, people are getting older, sometimes they're more personally impacted and they appreciate these things more. Yes. And, and I just want to thank you guys. Uh, definitely want to thank you just for the idea of ASAP. Um, and I think a, a greater question is um, as far as uh, ASAP goes after the parking surveys are, are done and uh, you have, uh, let's say, made sure that the community is a better place for individuals with disabilities as well as individuals that own businesses. Uh, what is the next step for ASAP? You want to take that, Terry? That's when we retire. <laughs> <laughs> we need never. you. We need you. Never, never. <laughs> like, we've really uh, been surprised that there's so uh, many issues. <laughs> like, when we first started this, we decided to um, work with the advisory council. All right. We've been told to, to, to wrap it up. So <laughs> what we're going to do now is uh, I want to ask you guys, what is the best way to contact you if, if individuals that own businesses are uh, wanting oh, yeah. to get their yeah. parking lot served? Thanks um, for bringing that up. Uh, send us an email at ASAP period 
T-E-R-I at gmail.com. And we would love to do any business out there. We're kind of offering, because of this podcast, um, a uh, free parking lot survey. That we just love to come by your free? business. and Sure, absolute. No, no charge. What was that email again, Terry? It is A-S-A-P period T-E-R-I at gmail.com. Awesome. Well, thank you both for being our guests today. Um, really appreciate for uh, what you're doing in the community, and I hope you guys continue to thrive. Thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. All right.